Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, it is 1050, so it's time for our next presentation of the day, and that is Sakai, the progressive web app with speaker Adrian Fish. Um, Adrian has been developing tools and libraries for Sakai since 2004. He's been heavily involved in some of the more recent innovations in the Sakai space, such as client-side browser alerts, new grading tool, the rubrics tool, and the new user and course dashboards. Adrian is a full stack developer and he works on server side code, fixing bugs, refactoring old code, and helping the community move towards a way of making our product more responsive, immediate, and using, um, using his client side development skills. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Adrian. Okay, thank you, Wilma. Um, hi, everybody. Yeah, uh, my name is Adrian, Adrian Fish. I, um, I'm currently running, uh, working for um, learning experiences. Uh, for um, Dr. Charles Severance. Um, so I've been working on some stuff um, called progressive uh, web apps. Um, I've written a lot of slides. So I'm going to steadily go through those. But um, progressive web apps are basically a way of writing a mobile-friendly application without having to write native code, right, for different platforms, like a set of code for each different platform. So... I'm going to get started. I've got quite a lot of slides, so uh, I can just kind of be lazy and just go through those. So, yeah, uh, Sakai, the progressive web app, um, one code base to rule them all, yeah? Um, that will become more meaningful as we go on through the through the slide deck. Uh, I'm just adjusting my presenter view here, so it's a bit useful for me. Yeah, cool. Okay. So that's the agenda, right? So you want a mobile app. Uh, I'm confused. What is a PWA? The specs, some screenshots, uh, the developer experience. You know, what what's it actually like to to work on this stuff, right? Uh, you know, what, what tools do you need? What what skill set exactly, uh, etc. Then the end. I'll quickly, you know, I'll give us a quick summary. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you want a mobile app? I mean, we've been talking about mobile apps in the Sakai community for forever you know and, and various kind of like uh, schools and places have, have written small mobile apps to suit their local environment but it's never really we're never really gained the traction for a single mobile app in the Sakai you know, on the Sakai kind of LMS so the good news is it's still an open playing field for new technologies because we've never really adopted any mobile technology up to now in, in earnest so it's great uh yeah mobile apps are cool uh they ping you when something important happens uh you don't have to get your laptop out you know it's great people love mobile applications so at the moment if you wanted to write a mobile app so if we wanted to go away and say right you know let's let's let's, let's write the one single mobile app for sakai uh, straight away as a developer you'd hit this kind of wall of technologies like loads of so many different ways of like you want to write something that works on iOS, you've got to use something, you use something like Swift or you might use React Native or various things. Then you think, well, okay, will it work on Android? Now I've got to use something, I've got to port the code base or whatever, or I've got to use a translation layer like Capacitor or whatever to, to uh, make the app work in Android. Uh, and it gets confusing like quickly. Um, it's terrible. So, um, yeah, yeah, there you are. It's confusing, very, very confusing. And you're just scared to death that you may have made the wrong stack decision. So, you know, you make a decision to use a particular platform. Um, it seems great and it's great fun. And you start coding and it's all fun and games, right? But then two years down the line, you, you, you realize it was a bad choice, right? It happens. It happens all the time in development. Um, again, luckily, because Sakai is not fully committed to a uh, to a mobile uh, you know a, an approach for developing mobile apps we've got an open playing field still which is great okay moving on All right enter the browser vendors so look, luckily for us uh browser vendors and w3c if anybody doesn't know what that is a w3c is like the committee that kind of looks after the specs for like things like html and like you know have heavy stuff right they're, they're the people that, you know, like the vendors 
the browser vendors go to, you know, for specifications or they push to update specifications. You know, there's a to and fro between people like, uh, you know, Chrome and, and Mozilla and the W3C. Um, luckily, the W3C usually catch up with what um, kind of like, uh, you know, companies and things are doing. Yeah, So, you know, a great example of that is all the kind of web uh, frameworks like React, Angular and all that stuff. You know, we've now got specifications for web components. And steadily, you know, slowly but surely, those specifications for web components that run just natively in the browser will take market share away from things like React and Angular. That's going to happen. It's happening now. It's going to happen more and more. Um, so mobile app frameworks have given rise to a set of browser standards. And that's what this talk is kind of about, uh, which together form the base for progressive web applications. So yeah, what is a PWA? Um, it's a good question. Yeah, and it's uh, it, is, it is nuanced, you know, because uh, a PWA, a progressive web app, is um, so. There's there's a concept in, uh, in user interface design of progressive um, disclosure, right? So, so you, if you're on a platform that only supports certain functionalities, your application will behave in a certain way. Um, if your code ends up on a more powerful platform, it should hopefully detect that it's got more power, different APIs, and it will it will adapt its behavior appropriately, right? So you'll get more, you'll get a more interesting UI, you'll get different buttons appearing, right? Where you can, you know, subscribe for, for push notifications, all that, all that kind of stuff, yeah. But a progressive web app really is, if I described it there, oh yeah, it's a yeah, selection from the buffet, a smorgasbord of good nibbles, which makes a good meal, hopefully, right? So it's a set of specifications that you can implement just one or two of them if you want, right? You've still got a progressive web app, but there may have been more you could have done, but you can just pick and choose from it. Um, so it's a nebulous term, right? That's what I'm saying, right? It's like, it's like modern JavaScript. There's stuff in browsers now that we can use that's great, and it makes your stuff act like a native application more, which is cool. It's an app-like experience. Just kind of said that. Yeah, you can install PWAs. Uh, you'll get an icon uh, either in your dock or you might get one on your uh, home screen on your mobile phone. Um, it starts to feel like like a native application. You know, at, at some point you won't be able to tell the difference. That's the that's the that's the point of this. And it's not pie in the sky stuff. It it works. Uh, you know, quite a lot of companies now are, are running these things. So hang on, what is a native app? Um, a native app, it's something developers use. We call something a native app. Really, it's kind of meaningless, right? You know, like a, you know, is a native app something that you write in machine code that runs on a washing machine? Is a native app something that's compiled? It's all kind of, again, a nebulous thing. Well, a native app usually means an application that you've written using a supported language by that device vendor. So, you know, in the, in the case of a mobile phone, um, it'll be, uh, you know, like something for iOS, right? So you'd use a language like uh, maybe Swift or, or, you know, like, so you'd use Xcode and Swift and and Apple will be like, oh, that's great. You're using our stuff. Wonderful, yeah. Um, but then you've got to write another one for Android or whatever, right? But that's, that's a native app, right? That's what I mean when I talk about those things. Okay. It looks good everywhere, right? We're doing a lot of this stuff now in Sakai. I mean, we've got like a pretty good, I think so anyway, a pretty good like a mobile view, right? So you shrink your, you shrink your Chrome right down, and you uh, or you you, you go into developer tools and you you pick the kind of mobile phone thing there, right? It looks pretty good. It scales pretty well. It's so looks good everywhere. It's just responsive design, right? Which is something that it's something that we're doing already, you know. Uh, We've been putting quite a lot of effort into into making our uh, our user interface responsive, and it's it's yielded some good results. So it looks good everywhere, right? So it should look good on a variety of device formats: desktop, tablet, phone. Um, you know, you can't make assumptions about where your PWA is going to run, right? A lot of people think when they start working on these things, like, oh, it's it's just for mobiles, right? It's just going to be on a little device, but no, because you know, you can you can install a PWA uh, via Chrome 
Firefox, you can't, which is quite interesting. Firefox don't let you do it. It has to be on a, on a mobile. But from Chrome, you can install um, your PWA from an icon in the address bar. And it launches in frame, in like a, in a, in like a kind of an application frame, right? But you can still stretch it. You can make it full screen. You can do whatever with it, right? So you have to make sure your stuff responds nicely, which we're doing a lot in Sakai already, and we should be proud as a, as a community of what we've achieved with, with that kind of stuff. Uh, could be on a watch. I don't know if that's really true. I don't know, I don't know if, if people are writing things for watches. But anyway, you know, possibly right. I just I put that in just to be a bit silly, you know. Um, it works offline. So PWAs are expected to work offline, uh, like a native application. So if you've got a, if you've got an app on your phone and you, you go through a tunnel or something, right, so you lose signal for a bit, I mean, you shouldn't be driving through tunnels and you're know, looking at your phone. But let's just say you were, you're driving through a tunnel, you're looking at your phone, trying not to kill everybody. Yeah. So, like, you, you, you know, you wouldn't expect your app to just die going through the tunnel. You'd expect the application to show something. So, oh, looks like you're offline at the minute. I'm going to sync this stuff up later, whatever you're doing while trying not to kill everybody in the tunnel. Um, so, there's some technologies in a PWA, like uh, caching, that if you implement that stuff, it means your application can work offline because you can cache things like your, your basic HTML template and your, uh, some of your assets like your CSS and stuff, right? So the thing will at least render and it might show you something saying, oh, you're offline. Uh, you need to do something about that, right? You know, so, um, so that's one That's one aspect of a PWA. This is like a, it's like a, it's like a checklist. To check, and there are websites where you can go and, and they maintain an up to date um, list of checkable items for um, for writing one of these one of these one of these kind of tools. Yeah, uh, so they'll have all the specifications with a checkbox going. Oh yes, I, I, I do caching. I do this. I do that. Right, it'll, it'll all be kind of there for you, just to just to remind you of the things you have to uh, you know you have to try and get working. Yeah, okay. Uh, it, it'll be expected to at least show you some cache data and manage your expectations. And I've used mobile apps, right, which are like, you know, native apps, and they perform terribly when you're offline. Like they just lock up or it'll show you an icon without any any information saying what you need to do or why. It's just an icon, you know. So, you know, you have to implement this stuff even in, in, even in a... You know, native application, you have to uh, you have to implement offline behavior and make sure it's reasonable. You know, okay. Uh, next, it works while closed. Okay, that's, this is a kind of a weird title for a slide, but um, what I mean by this is like when you when you close your app, you know, you still get your icon on your home screen, and um, you know, you'd expect that icon to update, like with a count or get a like a red blob on it or something yeah so that's what i mean so pwas can do that they can do that you know you fully you fully close the pwa right there's no more uh, browser session you know there's no like session cookies sat there or whatever right and there's nothing like that going on yeah however uh with browser push and a service worker you will get updates on your red dot so hopefully you'll get a nice count on there showing there's something new to read right yeah, so that's what I mean by that. It works. It's never really closed because your service worker lives forever. Your service worker, it's not exactly true, but almost. Your service worker lives outside of your web page. So when you install a service worker, it's a, it's a piece of code that lives outside the lifespan of your web page and can be woken up by the operating system when something comes in for it, which is the crucial component of... Um, of a PWA, but I will talk about that more soon. So how far are we in that? 15 minutes in, okay, let's go. Let's put, let's put the foot down a bit. It can be downloaded from an app store. Uh, yep, you can, you, I mean, I've, I haven't actually done this, but you can do this, people do do this. You, you can, as long as you have the correct signatures and all that kind of stuff you have to do with app store things, you, you can actually host these in app stores. You can put them on Google Play or in, a, in the Apple Store or whatever, right? And uh, you can actually download them from there. Um, 
you don't need to because you can you can get them from the actual website and install them from there using the share icon and things, which I'll show you. So I've got some nice screenshots. Let's speed up a bit. I want to show you some nice screenshots. Uh, it can act as a share target. I've not tried this, but there's a share API in browsers now where you can register something as a share target for like a, like an image, say. So I could take a photograph, classic, classic idea, right? Take a photograph. I want to share it. Uh, Sakai will come up, share it to Sakai, right? And share it and it goes off somewhere into your own, into, you know, the content hosting or something, I don't know, some, something like that. But you can share any kind of data if, if you provide the metadata for it. It can authenticate you using pass keys. Now, these are cool, right? And I've got these working, right? Um, there's a specification called WebAuthn where um, you can register a pass key um, from your device. So you can have multiple, pa I could have a pass key for my phone, I could have a pass key for my Chrome desktop, or and Sakai would, would show you those pass keys as a choice. Well, the interface would show you these pass keys. So you want to log in using this pass key. I have this working. It's cool. So Face ID works on my phone and fingerprint works on my laptop. And it's really nice. Um, it will update itself quietly. PWAs can update themselves without shouting about it or making you go off to the App Store again. So you can get like new CSS or whatever, right? And the app will just pull the new asset down, just like a web page, just like a web page, right? You you put a new CSS file, you rebuild your know, library, right? Or having you know loads of coffees and things, you re you rebuild library. Uh, and the next time somebody comes and hits your Sakai instance, I know, you know, you don't do that as a, as a commercial vendor, right? You don't just keep showing you assets on, but if you did, your browser would just pull the latest version down. Um, and PWAs can do that. So what's the difference? Right. For the user, not a lot really. And that's, that's a crucial, that's a crucial thing, right? There's not, if you, wrote a PWA and you, you you know you got all the service work stuff working and the caching and that and tested it and things and polished it right uh a user should not be able to know the difference apart from the instant well if they use the app store they wouldn't know the difference at all right but obviously if they pulled it from a browser link then they'd know they've got something different but once it's on the device you shouldn't know the difference uh PWAs are written using standard web development technologies. So we can use the same web development approaches uh, that we use for writing the rest of the Sakai code, right? Slightly different mindset, but well, that's all. So one code base to rule them all, you see, right? Um, okay, the specifications, uh, this is the boring bit or the exciting bit or somewhere in between. Right, so I'm, I'm, I've put these links on here just for people to just go and have a look at, you know, devs and stuff, right? Service workers are crucial. We already have a service worker in Sakai. It's something that, it's a piece of JavaScript that kind of lives, as I've mentioned before, outside of the scope of the current pager in Ryan. Right? It can do stuff for that page. It can, like, handle push notifications and, you know, like, you know, notify parts of the page that there's something arrived for it and things like that, right? The, they're really cool and they are the backbone of a PWA. Uh, push notifications, we have these in Sakai already and they're exactly the same thing. In fact, the PWA code that I've written, which I'll show you screenshots now, is using exactly the same components that we use in the, in the rest of Sakai. So we have a notifications component and we have a dashboards component, like the home dashboard with all the widgets in it. I'm using that exact same code in the mobile thing in the pwa thing because it's just an asset that's come from the sakai server it's like in every other web development kind of like um setting caching i've talked about that i'm not going to dwell on that um yeah there's lots of caching you can do in browsers now lots of different ways of caching data uh, that lives quite a long time you've got to manage it but we can do it Pass keys, I've already spoken about that. Um, I'm just giving a link to the to a couple of interesting pages about it. A quick Google, you'll find lots of stuff about it. Um, for the browser, they call it web or then, right? But it's a pass key. The, you know, the kind of cryptographic and uh, authentic authenticating concept of it is a pass key. And that's what web or then does, right? It, it lets us use pass keys in web applications. What does it mean? Right. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, it, it means users can install it. They can access it via an icon on their dock on their mobile. They'll get updated when things change. You'll get a notification. So you get when you when your phone's closed, right? You'll get a notification coming up as well. That's something I should have mentioned. Right? Just like just like a, a native application, right? You will get a, a notification popping up. You click it. It'll open your app, and it'll be in front of you. Uh, doesn't happen magically. This stuff doesn't happen magically. Sounds like magic. It doesn't happen magically. We have to build it, but it's easier now than it's ever been writing functionality like this. Okay, cool. Screenshots, right? So some tasteful screen grabs, all from an iPhone 12 mini, right? So that's my phone. So that, that phone there. It's that phone. Fact. Open that there. You can actually maybe see, maybe see it there, you know? See the dashboard. Yeah, see the dashboard scrolling past. There it is that's the that's the actual app there. Anyway, uh, screenshots are easy. Uh, right, okay. So install the PWA. I can't even see that screenshot. My screen is too small. Let's get past that one. Uh, yeah, so that's on that's on the that's on the iPhone, right? So that's like the share. Uh, the kind of share icon at the bottom. So if you go to um, go to the home page of, of Sakai, right, uh, and if you, you open the share icon, you can add a, a icon to your desktop or a, um, a home page icon. Uh, gives you a little thing there saying, "Do you want to install this?" Add to home screen. That's it. Add to home screen. We call it in the iPhone. I think on Android it's called something a bit different, but uh, right, you launch it. You get the, the friendly Sakai, um a login button at the bottom. Okay, so we go in. This is this is all for my phone, right? This is, this is real. It's not fake. It's real stuff, right? So um, you can either log in with uh, username and password there, or as you can see, you can use a pass key. So if you click that, uh, okay, I've logged. So yeah, this is so this so the users installed. The PWA, uh, they've logged in using a username and password, and then we prompt them saying, "Oh, do you want to create a passkey now?" Right? So this is like the first time user kind of scenario. Right? Do you want to create a passkey? So if they click that, create a passkey, they get this. So this is Face ID, right? So basically, um, you can you can you can say, "Yeah, I want to use a Face ID," right? So when you when you go through that process and go continue, that gets saved. In Sakai now, right? So I've got all this code working. This is all working stuff, right? This is what I've been working on for a while, yeah. So the pass key gets stored in the database. Well, like it's called binary blobs and things, and it's all you know, it's all got signatures on it and a public key on there and that kind of stuff. And then it can be used later for a user, right? So now it's logged us in, right? So we're logged in now. We've got a full session. This is a, this is a session. Uh, we can do everything that we can do in the rest of Sakai in theory because we've got a session. We're logged in. So that's the dashboard. Again, this is an interface. It's like a subset of our current interface, right? It's just a, it's a web component called Sakai PWA, just with some bits in it, right? So I've put the dashboard in it and I've put notifications in it. Um, and there you go. So there, I've not got the icon working yet for the home screen because iOS is a bit finicky about uh, icons for some reason. But there you go. So it's got the most boring icon in the world, bottom right. And you've got a, uh, a little dual counter there, right? With the number of unread unread notifications on there. I know we're getting short on time. Uh, notification. This is the same process we have on our, you know, desktop um, Sakai uh, website, right? Um, it's exactly the same. So you're going through, you're saying, I want notifications. Um, it gives the user a few chances to opt out, right? Because we want to be nice and not harass people. Um, so you accept notifications, then it takes you to the notifications, push is enabled. You click the test button, you get a test notification that's come from Sakai. Again, it's the same as what we have in the full-blown, you know, Sakai experience, right? It's the same code, in fact. I've not written new code. The only thing I've written new for this is the wrapper, that's the PWA component. Right, which just kind of hosts the stuff in, in some frames and that really. I mean, that's that's pretty much all I've 
I mean, I've had to do other things around getting, you know, getting pass keys working and working out service workers and all that kind of stuff, but caching and that. But okay. Um, the developer experience. Um, I've talked a lot about this. I'm just going to flip through this pretty quick. Same old web, web stack, uh, JavaScript, CSS. Uh, it's more mindset. You've got to start thinking in the in the in the offline caching, blah 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 mindset, right? You know. But other other than that, it's the same. It's the same technology. Yeah, there you go. Life cycle. Yeah, you've got to think about life cycle. You've got to think about service worker life cycle. So you, you install your app. Service worker goes to these various events, right? Going, oh, I'm activating now. You can you can cache some stuff for. Uh, so you've got to think about service workers and how they work, right? So again, it's just mindset. Responsiveness and download side is mindset. Okay, think about responsive, you know, user interfaces. Think about uh, compact download sizes. You could be on a really rubbish device. There are still rubbish devices in the world, right? You know, it does happen. Yeah, said rubbish, elegant. Elegant devices. Uh, how I work. Uh, basically, Chrome is your friend as a PWA developer, like any web developer. Chrome is your friend, right? Uh, you can, it gives you an install link, so you can install the PWA, and it gets installed into some folder on your on your Mac, right? And but it launches in a frame. You can look at the uh, JavaScript console for it and all that stuff, just like you can with a normal web app. Uh, but it's nice that hard, you know, uh, test it on your phone. Uh, as long as you've got a, uh, you use your kind of dom domain name. I think I've got mine there, Adrian's hyphen MacBook Pro 3 local, right? As long as you use a domain name, you can actually install the, um, the PWA on your phone as well, right? While developing. And it doesn't have much time to, to, your, to your life cycle at all, your development cycle. It's, uh, okay. Summary. Good. Uh, easy to install, work on any device with a browser. Seems just like a native app. Uh, automatic updates, which is an advantage over installed applications because you have a smaller download size because you're just down downloading new assets or whatever. Uh, develop using the web stack. Uh, PWAs are the future of native application development. More and more sites are offering a shh. Sorry. <laughs> More, more and more sites are offering a PWA installation from their home pages. And in time, they will drop the development of any native applications, one code base to rule them all. I think that's true. It's not hyperbole. I think that's true. I think this, this way of developing uh, kind of mobile applications, I think, is the future. And that's it. So thank you very much for, uh, for listening and coming along. Thank you, Adrian. That was awesome. And super interesting it does sound a lot like magic so the one code base <laughs> rule them all kind of makes sense there you know um, yeah. we do have a couple questions in the chat matt is asking is the idea we'd have one sakai web app um or that each school would need to deploy their own that's a really good question uh and i don't know the answer to that yet there is this questions around branding there's questions around uh you know different assets but if like if you're multi-hosting for instance uh for different for, for different schools from one vendor how you do that i don't actually know it's a good question um talking about like one thing though that does that does raise an interesting point which i should i'll just try and sneak in here right i mean um we could use this approach, right, of, of a, a PWA approach to, to all the Sakai in theory, right? Because, you know, we can cache all the static stuff that gets served, well, stuff that gets served by the server, like, uh, like the portal and things. We, we can technically cache all that on the URL, right? So we can cache all that stuff. And in theory, we can show that stuff offline and create an offline experience with all of Sakai. But it's a big job to do that. But it, Technically, it is possible, and I find myself stuck between worlds here. Of um, you know, do I carry on crafting like a like a standalone small thing just with a few cherry picked bits in it, or do we go you know the whole hog and, and actually think about you know making all of Sakai uh, an installable you know web application, you know the whole thing basically. So, which with our responsive design and things. It, it's possible, you know, but obviously it's a bigger job. Sorry, but I'm not really answering. But I don't know, man. Sorry, I don't know about how how we brand and and uh, do different versions and and manage versions and assets and all that stuff. I've not really got that far into that. 
I'm just doing the exciting stuff for the minute. Are they? <laughs> well, it's a great question, stuff. and it's a, a you know one that we can figure out as a community. But um, you know, it's good to to get that out there. Um, Chuck also asks, much of this is in 25, right? Yeah. A lot of the PWA stuff is yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got both. We've got some stuff in it. I mean, we've got so we've got we've got a service worker in there, and we've got a browser push in there. So we have got some components of a PWA already out in the wild. And like I say, I'm all I'm doing is just reusing those bits in 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 this. So the, the thing the things that I'm writing, it's literally just sat under a, a Sakai tool called PWA. And under there is an index file, right? And all that does, it just links to it just links to uh, like the uh, the bundled JS for the PWA and the bundled CSS. So I'm doing a I'm doing a separate CSS bundle that's a lot smaller than our main one, right? So um, and that's what I'm downloading as as part of the uh, PWA download. Um, I don't know. I've, I've drifted off there. I've I've answered the question there. Um, <laughs> I think we are out of time. Yeah, so we have I'll we have we have got bits. It. We have got yeah. bits. Yeah, sorry, we have got bits. Yeah, we have got bits in twenty five now. I mean, we've got push, and we've got a service worker. So some of the building blocks are there already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, there may be more questions. Feel free to post questions in the discussions in the in the um, Sakai site for the course. And we can always uh, try to get Adrian to come to one of our teaching and learning calls and do a little more discussion about yeah. this if people have questions. So, um, you know, stay tuned for announcements about that in upcoming uh, monthly calls. So um, we're going to go ahead and take a short break um, until 1130. At 1130, we're going to be back for uh, for Dr. Chuck's presentation on big changes in LTI. So I will see you guys back in about eight minutes and we'll hear from Dr. Chuck. Cheers.